Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim subhanaka la fahma lana illa ma fahamtana innaka antal jawal karim qul rabbi zidni ilma A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim wal 'asri innal insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa 'amilu s-salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr It's a very interesting thing to observe that modern man, uh, considering himself very advanced, very progressive, with unprecedented resources available, he still finds himself going deeper and deeper into deficit, loss. For example, the number of hospitals that we have today, the number of doctors that we have, the number of, or the amount of medical research, right? The resources that we have to support, you know, all of these processes is unprecedented. It goes on increasing day by day, right? That being the case, we should see disease on the decline. We should have eradicated disease altogether, as a matter of fact, right? Is that the case? Is it? Now we have a thing called coronavirus. We never heard of it before, right? So even though we have more resources, more hospitals, more doctors, more research, we have more disease and more difficult diseases. Security. So we have more, you know, police science going on, we have more research, we have more security processes, apparatuses, you know, triple, quadruple layers of security everywhere. Is security increasing or decreasing? You know? We have more jails, we have more, you know, courts, but so every it, crime should be decreasing, it's increasing. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is haq, you see. Well asirin al insan al fi khusr. So whatever we have, whatever intelligence we have, whatever resources that we have, whatever efforts we have, you know, it's not going to help us. It's not going to remove us from deficit. It's not going to take us towards success and towards gain. Have you ever heard of quicksand? There's a thing called quicksand. What happens is when you're walking along and then there's, you just start sinking. And the thing about quicksand is it's, it's, like, a, it's like a bottomless pit. So the more that you make effort, actually the quicker you're going to sink. So what a human being thinks is that while I'm sinking, the more effort I make, and I try and, and remove myself, so, you know, I'm going to be able to get out. But it doesn't work that way. It's the opposite. If you want to get out of quicksand, what you have to do is stop. Stop all movement. Still, you're going to stop, uh, you're going to stop sinking, but you're not going to be able to get out. Now, to get out, you have to have an external means. You have to have someone to extend a rope to you and catch hold of that rope, and they'll have to be strong enough to pull you out. So humanity is sinking everywhere. Sinking, you know, financially. Back in the 1960s, we used to find a tremendously, you know, comfortable apartment in Beverly Hills for $150 a month, you know? A person making, you know, $150 a week was a big amount. Today you can't pay your utility bills for that, right? However, we have economics departments, we have economic research, we've got, you know, all of these, you know, agencies and so forth, but economically again, 
Chusr. So to get out of quicksand, you have to stop. You have to catch hold of a rope, and someone has to actually pull you out. Similarly, humanity is sinking socially, financially, uh, politically, in every sphere. In, our, in, our, in human health, it's a sinking ship. If we want to come out of loss, we have to first of all stop what we're doing, analyze. Our solutions are not with us. Our solutions are with our Creator. And the Creator says, Catch hold of the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stop your, your own, you know, me, my, what I have. And connect with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Connect with his deen. Connect with the sharia. Connect with the sunnah of his prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove us from that loss in every sphere. And that is through four types of efforts. Number one, iman. Now, iman is, is a very vast subject. It's a whole life's process, inshallah. This afternoon, we're going to talk about that and try and see how we can actually develop that iman in detail, inshallah ta'ala. And basically, it's about believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is. Probably when you were all children, you all read this. Amantu billahi kama huwa. Did you read that? Bi asma'ihi wa sifati. Usually in Pakistan, India, you know. <laughs> we have this. When I first came to Pakistan, it was very interesting. I, I came to the masjid and, uh, you know, the, the, as they call the mulvi sahib, you know. He was teaching the children. So I asked him, what are you teaching them? So he said, I'm teaching them iman. Teaching them iman, mashallah. So he says, you know, uh, so I asked him, I said, you're teaching Iman, so how long does that take, you know, because I'm a new Muslim, I don't know that much about it, but um, anyway, so he says, I'm uh, teaching them Iman Mujmal, Iman Mufassal, it takes, you know, the kids, he's bright, he pays attention, maybe a day or two, he, you know, he picks it up. A day or two? Really? Well, you know, you have to make me understand because I'm a new fellow, you know, I, I'm, I'm a new Muslim, I don't know, my, but it, I, I, was, I understand, I think around 13 years, Nabi Alayhi was teaching Iman in Makkah Mukarramah and Sahaba, you know, were the best of students, were the best of teachers, the best of times. No, 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 we're just teaching them actually the, the words of Iman. You know, I said, okay, that makes sense. But the reality of Iman, that's quite a different story. It's a long, drawn-out, strenuous process. Inshallah, we're going to look into that later on, inshallah, today. So based on Iman, and according to the level of Iman, actions are produced by the human body. Actions through the eyes, through the tongue, through the hands, through the movement, in transactions, in worship, etc. Every activity of the human being actually is an action. And every action of the human being is either salih or it's talih. It's a righteous action or it's a non-righteous action. It's a good action or it's a bad action. So every action that we do, it's either taking us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closer to Jannah, or it's taking us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's displeasure and Jahannam. Every action. So every action that comes out of the, of the body, this is called amal. And if it's amal is salih, it's going to start taking us out of loss. Iman has to be developed. Actions have to be based on iman. And then, that is not also sufficient. Because we are the last ummat. We are the hope of humanity. That's why whenever I see these young children, and I'm so elated to see this, you know, Mashallah, these young boys and girls memorizing Quran, studying the deen in the United States, you know, ulama being, you know, produced. People who are going to be, you know, guiding lanterns, you know, to humanity. This is the, this is actually the, uh, the hope of humanity. Otherwise, humanity is lost. It's gone. It's a, it's a closed chapter. So what we have here, we have, you know, the, 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 the budding, you know, the, 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 the initial growth, the sprouts, you know, of the hope of humanity, you know. So 
with this iman and amana sadia, then we have to, you know, exhort one another in this righteous action, in this righteous way of life. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's wonderful to see that we have, mashallah, I don't know, what, we have three, four hundred people here? For Fajr? However, in Dallas, how, what is the Muslim population? Anyone knows that? How much? What's the, what's the Muslim population of Dallas? Any idea? A couple hundred thousand. So if a couple hundred thousand Muslims are actually all on this pattern, what do you think? And they're in every sphere and every, you know, every type of work. So if this Muslim, with his iman, with his amal salih, with his character, with his akhlaq, you know, with his fikr, with his concern, wherever he happens to be, he doesn't have to speak a single word. His own, is just his example of being that individual that lives this type of life, it's sufficient for hidayat for all those around him. There's no question about that. Once years ago, back in the, you know, the, early, the early days, back in the early 70s, there was a group of brothers, they were traveling from New York to Washington. So it was time for Salat, so they got down at the, at the, at the you know, the gas station, you know, what, what we call the, uh, you know, the, what do you call that, you know, on the highway? Mahatat <laughs> al-Benzin. So there was a janitor who was actually, you know, cleaning the area, and so this, you know, this group of brothers, they got down and they called the Adhan, they laid on the prayer rugs, and they offered Salat. So the janitor is just watching that. So then he walks over after the Salat is over. He says, who are you people and how does somebody enter into your religion? They were Muslims and you want to enter our religion? Just say this, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He entered into Islam like that. And this happens a lot. This is not uncommon, you know. So if we live a life of Iman and Amman as and we're concerned, we make an effort, you know, to bring others onto this life of Iman and Amna Salih. And nobody said it's going to be easy. And we say in Arabic, Al Ghali Ghali or Rakhis Rakhis. Expensive is expensive and cheap is cheap, you know. So Allah inna salat Allah ghali, Allah inna salat Allah jannah. The commodities that Allah SWT has prepared for his righteous servants is Jannah. It's not cheap, it's very expensive. We have to pay the price. So we're going to be tested in our persons, in our wealth, in our children, in our parents, in our places, with others. We have made some of you a fitna, a test, a trial for others. Husband is a test for the wife. Wife is a test for the husband. Parents are a test for the children. Children are a test for the parents. Neighbor is a test for the neighbor. Relative is a test for the relative. How are we going to act? Iman amana salya. Tawasi bil haq, tawasi bil sabr. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand that we have an objective in life. It is to develop a closeness with him, to develop a life of Amr al And we have the mission of our Prophet والسلام, to be that example to humanity and how, how direly in need they are of that example. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and all of you and all of this Muslim ummah this example before it's too late. Jazakum al khair.